Um, so yeah, we were looking at how do you teach clinical decision making outside of uh, a multiple choice quiz format. And so our first day we were basically found out that encoding how you make decisions is actually quite hard. Um, so we started off doing very kind of tree-like structures, but then in order to generate the right amount of complexity, the right amount of difficulty you can use it, um, there's a huge amount of work that goes into whoever's uh, creating those scenarios. So this is dynamically generated from a list of actions in a plain text file, and then behind each of these actions there are various outcomes that again are allocated behind all of these cards. And then there's a bit of code running on that laptop that is pretty much equal to what stuff. Yeah, that will then take whatever outcomes you end up with and generate the appropriate sequence of actions that you should have taken. So for instance, if you check danger and the flip side should tell you what the outcome is. Um, yeah. When there's no danger, then you progress, progress to the next step. If, however, you are allocated a dangerous scenario, then the correct sequence of answers will change depending on what the decision is. Um, this is just using Trello as a simple UI because obviously we didn't have enough time to generate something a bit prettier, um, but at least it lets us use some nice images. Oh, yeah, and then the corrected actions are generated based on. So this is the sequence of And again, this is done through plain text files. So if you wanted to write a completely different scenario, so we were using basically just BLS algorithms as a, as a test. If you want to do different scenarios, so like presentations for various conditions, any presentation, those kind of things, as long as you can write the set of actions that you want to test, you can then generate something a bit like this. Scenarios that you see this being used in so, as you're trying to. So, initially, the idea that I came up with was to, to deal with um, high level clinical decision making. So, a complicated patient with many comorbidities, what would you do? And you would learn from the purposes of making the wrong decision. If you made the wrong decision, you want maybe do right intervention, this could be the outcome. Far too complicated for me. So, we tried to find a simple scenario. The simple scenario we thought was basic life support as known by the general public. So people on the street will know basic life support through training where they achieve through some jobs and or other areas, but they don't have very many opportunities to essentially practice their knowledge. Because when the real event happens, they have to institute a sequence of events in an appropriate way to actually save somebody's life. But they don't get that chance to sort of do that in real life and break their knees because it doesn't happen thankfully very often. But when it does happen, they want to be armed and know that, okay, if I'm faced with this, I will do the right things in the right order. And as a result, hopefully, you get a good response from the patient. That's right. Building on that, and this is therefore a training thing. It's a training. It's, it's, not, it's not something you'd actually use in real life with a patient in front of you. No, no. I, the, the people have attempted to, to achieve um, apps that do that, but I'm not convinced. There, there's things like the um, apps that will apparently detect <laughs> their breathing because people in a state of high panic. Don't even know if somebody's breathing or not, so you can place it upon their belly and see if the diagrams are really not very convincing. Any questions? Sorry, one last follow up to that. Um, so, are you expecting this to be used in a, a formal training scenario or in a I have time to kill on the tube and this is a good way to remind myself how this goes kind of way? I would prefer the latter, but I think the latter is a much more effective way to engage with people because formal training requires time to put aside for formal training. People don't do that. I've had my training. What more do I need to know? This is an opportunity for me to test myself when I'm bored, on the bus, on the tube. It may well be in the next five minutes I'm encountering the situation. Great, thank you. Okay, so we've got a quick question from the audience from anybody? You don't have to think one. Okay, thank you very much.